Hello everyone, I'm Doug Vineyard from Belmont Engineering College here to guide you through the Android Developer course. Today, we're going to be looking into introduction of APIs. So, API. APIs stand for Application Program Interface. Before we get into what is an API and how we use it, we'll learn a little more about where it is being used. So, and as it's the day three of the session, I hope you have already explored the editor and you are comfortable with Android Studio development. And uh, let's say you are uh, you want to do something further and you are thinking what next to do or uh, what kind of application you want to create. And suddenly some idea might pop into your head and you might think like, okay, I know the ins and outs of Android Studio Editor, so I'm going to make an application like Snapchat where uh, people get live stickers that uh, they will be having these funny faces like they will make their make a dog face or uh, they will have birds flying over their head and that sort of thing and you want to make an application of that sort so you start designing the ui so you, then you plan out a camera intent and you work all this stuff you keep coding and coding and coding and you might have progressed a certain point in your uh, application then there comes an important oops factor you realize that you do not know image processing which is ultimately what is required for the job in order to make uh, birds fly over a person's head in a live camera or something and you do know that you do come to the realization that image processing is something that takes weeks to learn and it might take more than a month to implement in your application so you are right now stuck in the middle of nowhere so you cannot just go ahead and come back to learning, learning, machine, learning image processing and all those stuff and it is going to take a lot of development time. But there is a possibility to come out of this scenario. Some pro coder who is experienced in all these image processing stuff might have already written a code that suits your exact application and he might have put it on the internet for a, pre, uh, for a free or uh, paid usage, right? So, this is the place where APIs come in. That is what an API is. So, there might be companies or group of people who write codes for general purpose and uh, these codes are available on the internet which can be used by people like developers in their applications. It might be a paid or a free service. It depends upon the company. So, getting into different types of APIs, there are several API use cases and we are going to be majorly discussing about the classifications of an API. So there are free server backed APIs, there are paid server backed APIs and there are free serverless APIs. A free server backed API is something that has its own servers and it provides its service for free to the developers. For a, a common example is Google Maps API. All Android developers can use Google Maps API for free. And basically, you just have to send your uh, GPS location from your phone to the Google server and the Google server loads a real-time map based on that input. And if you, let's say if you are plotting up directions from one place to another, the Google map API not only handles just the direction, it handles your, it says you the speed at which you are traveling, it uh, calculates the estimated time of arrival and it also processes the number of uh, distinctions in traffic zones from your uh, source to the destination where you're traveling so that is a classic example of a free server backed api there are paid server backed apis and uh, they it is like there are companies which develop apis and provide them as a service based on requests from the developers it is basically a paid service where the input from the users application goes directly to the API server and then the API server processes the input and gives the output back to the application. So uh, the common examples are 3D scape. 3D scape is an API which is used to render live 3D models from images that you take. So these kind of APIs are uh, subscription based APIs. So you have to pay money in order to get your application working or in order to host your application. So then, 
we move on to the third part where free serverless APIs. This is the most common thing. So individual coders or group of coders might come together and develop some product which might be helpful for everybody and they might put it on sites like GitHub or somewhere. So these codes uh, are need to be put on your own server. It is actually serverless. So if you have your own server, you just have to upload these uh, APIs to your server and your own server will be able to handle all the processing that is they would have already given you the source code of image processing like stuff so you just have to put it in your server so that the request from your application will go directly to your own server and the response also goes back to your own application so a classic example like this is what you find on github so open maps api have also placed their own uh, api on the open internet it seems just don't mind the examples that I give. So there are a lot of things in GitHub. You just go ahead and search it out. So you will know a lot about how free serverless APIs. Discuss how the API works. So your application makes a request to the API server and the API server responds with the output. So this is how the APIs work in general. So on the upcoming video, we'll learn about uh, an API which is commonly used for web scraping and sort of stuff. Uh, the name of that API is JSU and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.